are in one of the most dynamic and vibrant tourist markets in the world. Dubai is unique when it comes to international tourist markets. For instance, for every one resident in this city, there are five international hotel guests. Dubai has come a long way. If I were to rank Dubai amongst international cities, it ranks 117th for urbanized land area. It ranks 104th in terms of population. We're talking about cities, by the way, not countries here. But when we look at foreign international hotel guests and hotel apartment guests, Dubai ranks number fourth. And not only that, when it comes to their spend, it's globally number one. Visitors to Dubai last year spent a total 113 billion dirhams across various categories. And that's a lot. That's more than the combined total spent by visitors to New York and Paris together. Dubai has come a long way. 10 years ago in 2006, visitors to Dubai spent only 30 billion. And 30 billion didn't even put Dubai in the top 15 in 2006. The spend has remained relatively consistent when it comes to the two biggest categories of accommodation and shopping. The category that's witnessed the strongest growth has been entertainment. Entertainment accounted for 8% of 30 billion in 2006. Last year, it accounted for 17% of 113 billion. Now, moving on to, from spend to who is coming to Dubai, vast majority of visitors to Dubai on average travel on a four hour or less flight. Two thirds of visitors are from a four hour flight time. And virtually all of the visitors, 98% of travelers to Dubai, fly eight hours or less. If I were to look at broad nationality groupings by volume, visitor traffic, and their value, they're similar to each other. And for obvious reasons, the more developed and affluent regions such as the GCC Arab and the West have slightly higher contribution to monetary value. And some of the developing countries such as Asia and Africa have a lower contribution to value. But what is more interesting is the top five countries from visitor traffic is different from visitor spend. From visitor perspective, in terms of volume, India ranks number one, sending the highest number of visitors to Dubai, followed by Saudi Arabia, UK, Oman, and Pakistan. This segmentation changes when I look at their spend. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got a bad throat today. Um, India drops from number one to number three, and is replaced by Saudi Arabia taking the pole position at number one, UK at number two. And we have, interestingly, Germany and China appear in the top five from a monetary spend perspective, despite them not appearing in the top five from a value, I'm sorry, from a volume perspective. What that essentially means is that you have a more valuable Chinese customer and a more valuable German visitor who are punching well above their weight when it comes to spend. Asia has been the fastest growing market. Last three years, Asian visitors have accounted a 22% growth per annum year on year. That's three times higher than the average growth of visitors to Dubai at 7%. Moving on from the nationalities and the broad spend segments, I'd like to go on to look at how key regions have changed with regards to their market share and their rate of growth. And the biggest changes that we've seen are amongst Western visitors amongst GCC Arabs and Asian travelers. Westerner visitors to Dubai 10 years ago were growing slightly above average long-term growth rate of 8%. They were growing at 10%, accounting for 42% of visitors to Dubai. But that has changed. Over the last few years, Westerners have been growing at a negligible 1% or 2% growth rate. And their contribution in terms of volume has dropped to about 34%. At the same time, this has been compensated by a growth amongst GCC visitors. GCC visitors in 2006 accounted for 17% of travelers. Now they account for close to 24% of travelers, and their rate of growth is at about 5%. But the most impressive changes that have taken place have been amongst Asian visitors. Asians 
had been growing uh, quite well above average at 10% in 2006, but still accounting less than 20% of travelers at about 17 odd uh, percent, 18 percent. But that growth rate has compounded over time. And last three years, as we saw, they've been growing at close to 20% each year. And today, Asian travelers to Dubai account for 27% of visitors to uh, Dubai. What we have done is taking the nationalities, taking how much is spent on various categories, segmented the visitors to Dubai by various motives. By far, the biggest motive of visitor Dubai is shopping. And the, the findings here are based on primary research that GRMC has conducted with visitors coming to Dubai. Most of the visitors, 30% of the visitors traveling to Dubai cited that primary motive of their driving um, drive to Dubai is shopping. These are GCC visitors and also affluent Arabs and Asians earning relatively high at 43,000 dirhams a month and also spending uh, quite high over their four days of stay at 35,000 dirhams. Despite them being only 30% of the visitors, their spend uh, is 45 billion. That is 40% of the entire spend uh, taking place in Dubai. The second biggest category is experiential travelers. These are travelers who are coming to Dubai to partake in leisure, safaris, beaches, uh, theme parks. And, and what not. These are predominantly Westerners, GCC Arabs and other Arabs, and they come from largely middle income families earning 22,000 dirhams a month on average. And they're spending 95% of their monthly income whilst they're in Dubai, 21,000 uh, dirhams is their month um, spend over the four, four and a half day stay. One of the most stable categories of visitors is business travelers at 22%. And they have been fairly consistent over the last 10 years or so in terms of their uh, ratio contribution. Their nationality representation is quite global. You've got Arabs, Africans, Asians, Westerners, and whatnot. They earn around 24,000 dirhams a month, but their spend is relatively low, and their duration of stay is also low at 2.2 uh, days, and the spend is only 7,000 dirhams, and a, a big chunk of the spend, close to 40%, is spent on hotel accommodation. One of the faster growing categories that we've seen are first time travelers. These are first time travelers who are traveling for the first time out of their home country. And these are largely South Asians, East Asians. And they're spending about 8,000 dirhams, which is not a lot, but that's one and a half times their monthly income, which is relatively low at five and a half thousand dirhams. Despite this category accounting for 15% of traffic, they account for less than 9% of total spend in Dubai. And the final category of visitors to Dubai is those visiting family and friends. These visitors stay the longest, 19 days, but uh, please don't treat that as being in hotel and hotel apartments. Most of these visitors stay with their friends and family. Only a small proportion stay in hotel and hotel apartments. Their spend is also quite low at only 6,000. Now, these are the numbers for 2016. How are they likely to change over the coming five years? There are several factors that will play a role. And what I'd like to do is, before presenting what our thoughts are, are on this segment five years from now, I'd like to cover some of these key trends that are there and which would drive the change in composition. One of the key trends is going to be visitors from second and third tier cities in South and Southeast Asia. And these visitors will witness not only double digit growth, but also one of the most aspirational spends, despite earning relatively low, they would be spending a greater proportion of their incomes in, in Dubai. This inadvertently would bring a lot more Asian visitors, but spend patterns would change. Because their composition is now growing as a ratio of total visitors to Dubai, and because of their background, their spend is going to be somewhat contained, so they would be taking the ratio of spend away from Westerners and other travelers, and that would result in lower, lower growth rate in spend. Average length of stay is expected to increase. Right now, average length of stay in, in Dubai is about 3.8 days. And if I were to put that in context of an international market, let's say like the UK, people stay on average 7.7 .7 days in the UK compared to Dubai's current average of 3.8. That's going to increase to 4.4 .4 days in our, in our view. 
Tourists will seek more affordable accommodation, but also alternatives such as Airbnb. Shopping malls will not be enough. Uh, over the last few years, shopping malls had been enough to attract the visitor, but now visitors will seek more experiential entertainment options. And this segment of the market will attract a bigger proportion of spend, and some of the spend is possibly going to be diverted away from re retail spend into entertainment. Overall, we feel tourist growth is going to continue at 7% and Dubai will reach its target of 20 million visitors by 2020. However, there'll be a change in terms of average growth rate of spend. This is going to be somewhat subdued at 5%. That is because of the changing nature of tourists and where that tourist is coming from. What does that mean in terms of our segments? <clears throat> Certain segments would shrink. There would be a slight drop in visit motives for shopping, but shopping would still be the dominant category. There'd be a slight 1% drop. Having said that, shopping would account for 61, um, 61 billion dirhams worth of spend. That is 42% of total spend. In 2016, it was 40% of total spend. So these guys, these affluent visitors from the GCC, from other Arab countries and Asians, affluent Asians, would be spending at quite an aggressive growth rate. What will also happen at the same time is experiential travelers and first-time travelers would increase as a proportion. One in five visitors to Dubai five years from now would be visiting a foreign country for the first time. So every fifth visitor that we see in Dubai would be a first-time traveler five years from now. Experiential travelers will also increase as a proportion. Together, they will account for 144 billion dirhams worth of spend in 2021. And how would that be allocated across various categories? Shopping and accommodation would still account for the biggest spend categories. However, their ratios would change slightly and drop. And this would be compensated by increased proportion of spend being allocated to entertainment and also to F&B. And as such, when hoteliers and malls and other entertainment providers would be designing their product, they would need to bear in mind the FEC component and also the FNB component. Thank you very much. Uh, that brings me to the end of my uh, presentation. I hope there were some findings in there that were of some use to you and would assist you in planning uh, for the visitors that we would be welcoming over the coming years to Dubai. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Fascinating insights. Thank you. I have Thanks. just one question for you. Just one question for you before we leave. To what extent is all the talk about millennials hype? To what extent are they genuinely different? And will the hospitality industry have to genuinely act differently to attract and satisfy them? Yes, uh, thanks for asking that question. And I, as I You've got about 60 seconds. Okay, as I mentioned, <laughs> the category that's going to witness one of the biggest growth are experiential travelers. These are the millennials. They will come to Dubai, but they're not looking for hard products to purchase. They're not looking to go into shopping malls and buy something and take that back home. What they're looking for is memories. They're looking for experiences. They're looking for something authentic. And what the developers of hotels, what the developers of shopping malls and entertainment venues need to do is provide those experiences to these millennials. This is what our uh, view is. Good, it's fascinating. Thanks very much, Thank indeed for your time. Thanks. Really appreciate it today. Thanks.